Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about the understanding B223, which is advantages of compartmentalization in the cytoplasm of cells. We're going to include the concentration of metabolites and enzymes and the separation of incompatible biochemical processes. We're going to include a discussion of lysosomes and phagocytic vacuoles as examples. This is a follow-up video to the previous video, which was talking about why cells need to become compartmentalized in the first place. This is our specific application video where we're going to focus on lysosome production and the necessary function of lysosomes, which is phagocytic vacuoles. So the first thing we need to do is talk about, as review, the idea of compartmentalization within a eukaryotic cell. You've seen a variety of these eukaryotic cell diagrams. All of them depict cellular compartments, i.e. organelles, within these eukaryotic cells. There are a variety of compartments. All of the organelles have a variety of functions. They're all specifically adapted and structured in a way that allows them to function correctly. And so compartmentalization has allowed a division of labor within the cell. The mitochondria are really good and are structured in a way that allows them to easily produce large numbers of ATP. The rough ER are also adapted and structured in a way that allows them to produce large amounts of protein. Golgi apparatus always is very close to the rough ER. It is structured in a way that allows it to receive the protein products transported via vesicles from the rough ER to the Golgi in order to produce vesicles that will ultimately be secreted. A variety of other cellular structures are compartmentalized and are produced in order to function in a particular way. Specific tasks carried out by a single organelle or an organelle-like structure is the specific function of that particular compartment. And keeping reactions separate in different parts of the cell means that the metabolites and the enzymes for each process can be concentrated in a particular area. The mitochondria is a compartment that allows all of the enzymes that are necessary to function within the Krebs cycle specifically, to function within the prep step or the transition link reaction to function correctly. It allows the enzymes necessary to produce ATP, like ATP synthase, to function correctly. And there are a variety of other enzymatic reactions that take place in a variety of other compartments that need to be separated from other enzymatic reactions so that they don't compete with each other or they don't impede on their ability to produce the function that they are designed to produce. Some of these Metabolic actions are in the area of energy production, like I already talked about. The mitochondria is all about and structured in a way that allows it to produce energy. Metabolism is the sum total of all enzymatic reactions, that is both catabolism and anabolism, the synthesis of larger molecules from smaller ones, and the breakdown of larger compounds into smaller ones. Both make up metabolism. It is really important that all of the enzymes necessary to fulfill a healthy metabolism stay walled off and compartmentalized. Biosynthesis, basically the uh, ability to replicate itself is important. All of it is enzyme mediated, meaning it is going to require the use of enzymes all along the way to replicate not only organelles within the cell, but the cell itself and degradation, meaning what happens to cellular components when they become old or when they wear out or when the cell becomes damaged or when the cell becomes infected or when the cell becomes overrun by viral particles. All of those are within the umbrella term of degradation and need to be dealt with by enzymes. So why is it important or vital that we keep cellular metabolic pathways walled off and compartmentalized or within a particular compartment? You can see that this is just one example of a piece of a cellular metabolic pathway. It involves several enzymes and several in intermediates in order to take one reactant and get a product. A lot of times there is a reactant. There are intermediate molecules that are produced on their way to producing the product, but it is vital. Now, you don't need to understand or be able to draw this or be able to annotate this. I just wanted to provide this as an example in order to reinforce the need to keep all of these metabolic pathways in their individual compartments. An advantage of compartmentalization, it allows separation of metabolites, i.e. pathways run more smoothly, can be easily controlled, and do not interfere with each other. We don't want all of these enzymes competing for each other and potentially impeding 
on their ability to perform their particular biochemical process effectively. So what is a phagocytic vacuole? Endocytosis is when structures are brought into, endo means into the cell, by a particular vesicle. The way that a cell brings substances in from outside to inside of the cell is through a vesicle. Now, these vesicles will oftentimes bind with a particular lysosome to produce this phagocytic vacuole and so lysosomes participate in the breakdown of wastes and cellular components that need to be replaced. Lysosomes are made via the Golgi apparatus. The endoplasmic reticulum will produce the protein which will ultimately be folded into the digestive enzymes that will become the lysosome. These proteins will be sent to the Golgi apparatus the Golgi apparatus will modify the proteins and will package them in a vesicle that is conducive to becoming a lysosome. Once it leaves the Golgi, it will be modified into a particular lysosome. Once the lysosome is made and matured, it becomes a fully functioning lysosome, which is going to have a function of being able to break down waste and cellular components that need to be replaced. Food particles or pathogens will enter the cell and will be engulfed into a particular vesicle. Once the bacterium, in this case, is engulfed and completely surrounded by a part of the membrane, it becomes a phagosome. Phagosome is the walled off bacterium or walled off pathogen. The phagosome is going to bind with the lysosome in order to produce the phagolysosome. Once the lysosome gives the phagosome its digestive enzymes, those digestive enzymes will begin to break down the pathogen and as you watch it over a time lapse, the pathogen is now completely digested. The enzymes have done their job. And since the pathogen is digested, the phagolysosome will then bind to the membrane and expel the soluble debris in a process called exocytosis. Exocytosis is the opposite of endocytosis. Endocytosis would be the bringing in to the cell material exocytosis would be exiting or the cellular material, the soluble debris exiting the cell once it is completely digested. Phagocytic vacuole, the phagosome is formed. Phagosome moves around the cell until it fuses with a lysosome. Acidic enzymes inside the lysosome digest the food and or eliminate the threat. And an advantage of this particular pathway is that lysosomes keep enzymes from damaging the cell. These enzymes are very good at digesting cellular material. If they were not walled off or kept within this particular vesicle, they would degradate all of the good cellular components that we obviously want to keep. But because we keep them in their individual compartment, they don't hurt our cells. That is obviously one of the biggest advantages of compartmentalization is this use of lysosome. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a question in the comments. See ya.